This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, things are breaking all around me. But are they haunted? Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm haunted. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 284 for Sunday, the 2nd of May, 2021. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. How you doing, man? Good, dude. It's uh, it's Sunday night. This is like our, our new start time, I guess. I, um, I know. I'm all right. Yeah. It's, it's a good way to start the week, I guess. It's or not end bad. the week, depending on your perspective. Uh, this is ending the week because we're at the end of the e- weekend. See, that's how that works. End that's of the right. week end is the end of the week. Yeah, but also bookends are on both ends of the week, the beginning and the end, or the, 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 the begin, or you know what I mean. Exactly. You know I mean? See, you Words. can't even explain Words. it. How the fuck am I supposed to understand <laughs> if you can't explain it? This is on you. This is your fault. Oh man. Hey man, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and let you start this week because I'm gonna kind of go off on some shit. So okay, tell us. Uh, first of all, who just turned the light off in your kitchen? Oh, I. Mm, ghosts, yeah, maybe ghosts. I don't know. Yeah, I fucking, really have no idea. It's freaky. Um, and now it's on. Yeah, they, now it's on again. It's weird. That's what ghosts do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why do so, ghosts turn lights on though? They're like, they, can't they see in the dark? Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> all right, how's your week, man? <laughs> um, I mean. It, it was all right. We um, we are back full time at the office now. Uh, the, the glorious days of teleworking are over for me, at least for now. Yeah. Every one of us are fully vaccinated. So, yeah. I mean, we still have to do the COVID measures like the uh, social distancing and masks and whatnot. If, mm-hmm. if uh, somebody comes to visit us, things like that. Uh, but we're we're pretty much back to normal. And uh that kind of sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but other than that, man, uh, things are things are going all right. We got a, a new guy in the office, and um, he and one of my other coworkers actually came over to my house for some beers the other night. Oh, uh, without wearing masks, it was it was like, what the fuck is this? Like I remember stuff like this happening at once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I so. Uh, hmm. There's been so much going on. Mm-hmm. So fucking mm-hmm. much going on. David's soccer season started. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been recording the games and trying to stream them. And I'll explain the trying soon. But I've got uh, I've got a nice rig where I can lift my, my video camera up above the field. So I'm not just, you know, standing there taking pictures of everybody's sides. Um, mm-hmm. Videos have turned out pretty good. It's taking a little practice. Got a, got a little thing, to you know, a little remote control to zoom in and stuff like that. And I can cont- control turn it and stuff i got a little little screen uh recorder it's a ninja five is kind of expensive but man it's pretty fucking sweet so i can watch the the video feed as i'm turning the camera so i'm not just guessing that that's where the people are and stuff like that and right. also serves as a backup recorder so you know not only does the camera have the recording but then uh the the ninja has the recording and i've been doing that and it's been pretty awesome and uh um you know i had to do that in the rain the other day that kind of sucked and then the next day, I go out to record another game. I get there nice and early, and of course, the the press box that I need is not unlocked, so I can't get to power. Luckily, I have a standby battery. Uh, plug my laptop into that, because I'm basically streaming it over OBS. That's what I'm doing. I'm streaming it over OBS. Mm-hmm. And laptop won't turn on. Oh. Oh, no. Just It won't turn on. Then I try to force shut down, you know, hold the, hold the power button, and let it come back and I don't get a chime but I get a screen and the screen is like hey uh your Mac shut down because of a problem okay well no shit that's I, I hit the button I held it down I shut it down okay we're we're on the same page here yeah that's what I expected I get the login screen I log in and it the screen goes blank mm. Mm. no streaming okay. that day um Several hours of troubleshooting later, my 2012 MacBook Pro Retina that I've held on to that started this podcast mm. 
Most of the editing editing in the early days was on this podcast. Until I got to Alaska, all the editing was on this pod, was on this computer. All my tours in Korea and everything else, the inspiration to start a podcast was on this this laptop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's officially dead. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. It's finally just died. And I'm sure it can be fixed. I'm sure it can. I'm sure there's a resurrection somewhere in it. But it is beyond my Google Foo, and it is beyond um, my capabilities as a Mac troubleshooter. It's like I cannot fix it. I've torn it apart. I looked at all mm. the battery connections, everything else. It's apparently a power mm. issue that the system will give me the chime, but then immediately just die. And I've done everything I can to fix it, and I can't not, cannot fix it. Hmm. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Which I was planning on buying a new Mac this year anyway, but not a MacBook, you know, because I already had a MacBook. It's been working fine. It's, it runs hot. Uh, it doesn't quite levitate like yours does, but. Um, <laughs> right. So instead, I got a new MacBook Pro. Oh. This is a new okay. thir- the new 13 inch M1 version. Um, That's a sexy looking machine. I got to tell you, dude, I haven't used this whole lot because I just picked it up last night. Craig Federighi was right when he fucking gawked at this thing and lustfully. It's amazing. <laughs> it's it's everything that you thought your computer should be. I do have one problem, though. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you know what this is? Um, Expl- describe this to our listeners. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's a it's a little box. It looks like a video capture card. Um, it's just a, just a, a little black re- rectangular box. Fits easily in your hand. Yes, this is an Elgato HD sixty S. Mm-hmm. This is my video capture to go from my monitor, my off camera monitor, into my computer to OBS to send it out to the world. Mm-hmm. NDI is not working properly on the M1 processor. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been spending a lot of today doing after I cleaned up my office, and I'll get to that in a second. So <laughs> that's my current issue is it, it sees, like, the, the, the Mac sees it if I use the Elgato software, and I could video capture from that into OBS, like, you know, do a partial window capture and crop it in and stuff like that. It's messy, but it would work. But I can't just... The OBS link software is not go- sending this out into the world. Just before we went live, I checked on my little monitor app on my phone, and the link had gone live on my network. So now I got even more troubleshooting to do because now I have to figure out why the hell it showed up when it hadn't showed up before. So that's that. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's been fun. Super fun. Yeah, sounds sounds like it. Now, let me get to today. <laughs> okay. I told you a lot of stuff has been breaking. Mm-hmm. Today... I used to be able to reach right up here and grab my green bong up here. Uh, yes. I was troubleshooting my my Mac issues. I yawned. When I yawned, I bumped my desk. My desk juddered back and forth. My Mac Mini up here came down with the monitor. The monitor hit the bong. The bong hit the desk. The bong shattered. So I had mm. l- sh- s- translucent green... Shards of glass every fucking where. So it took me about three hours to clean my office and, and you know, because I started just moving stuff out of the way to vacuum. And then I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I might as well just go ahead and clean this office. And by the way, my yep. new least favorite thing in the world. Cleaning offices? Glass shattered on carpet. Yes. Oh, that's that. It's one thing when it's on a floor and you might just have a little shard here and there. In the carpet, it's a whole different fuck that dude. It becomes part of the carpet. It does. It's it's a I have a permanent permanently prickly part of my carpet now. Oh God. So So is this a uh, a no barefoot zone for you now? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> fuck it. I'll 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 take the the glass shard once I I, I mean I, I gotta I gotta take my just with desserts, you know. I should have been putting glass up there. I shouldn't have fucking yawned in a way that caused me to, to... Uh, I mean if you're yawning so violently that well, you're it was a yawn. Disrupting. The yawn, the yawn turned into a stretch. Yep. You know. Yep. That's uh, wow. That that's extreme yawning right there. Yeah, it was it was pretty intense. So how how's the Mac Mini? 
Uh, I haven't turned it on yet. <laughs> well, you might have another device to troubleshoot. Yeah, but I never used that one though. So it's like it's like the old one, the one that I bought in 2010. It just kind of sits there. So when I want to do iMessage, um, without my if my phone's dead or whatever, I can just sit here and do iMessage as I'm working on stuff. You know, mm -hmm. that's really mm -hmm. the only thing it's there for. Um, wow. Yeah. It's kind of my iMessage yep. machine. But that's how my week's gone, man. It's uh, it's been peachy. Well, um, at least your house isn't haunted, or is it? <laughs> I'm thinking maybe I am. Like seriously, <laughs> what the hell? You want to play a game? Uh, please. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! This week's game is called the Ritual Haunting. The damn. Woo! Try it again. Take yeah. two. Take two. The Ritual Haunting of Misery House. So uh, our subject this evening is haunted houses, of course. So I made a game that's going to ask you: Is this movie based on a real life haunting? Okay. So I'm going to name ten movies. Mm -hmm. You tell me if it's purported to be based on a on a true haunting. So depending on uh, where you stand on such matters, and also uh, the believability of the accounts and so forth, none of that really matters. It's if the story was purported to be true, okay, and they made a movie on it. Sounds good. All right. Mm -hmm. Simple enough. All right. All right. Is this movie based on a real haunting? You haven't Your told me the movie is yet. The Conjuring. The Conjuring, uh, yes, based on a real movie, or based on a real house, or it a real is. location. Yes, it is, it is. Um, okay, yes. off to a good start here. All right. Your second film, uh -huh. The Amityville Horror. Yes. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> it's the only one I know for certain. <laughs> the, yeah, the, I mean, there's, man, the, the story behind the story to me is more fascinating than, than the ghost story itself because it was a yeah like a family that like it was debunked and then it wasn't and then it was and then it was like this this whole craziness uh, at, behind it at this point every account of that story can could be fairly considered revisionist history yeah <laughs> that's like yeah. that's how many times it's been retold you there's no way to know which which For accounts sure. are I, genuine? I looked up. I looked up the Amityville horror uh, franchise. Uh, yeah, probably like a week or so ago, and there's something like 30 movies with Amityville in the name. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's there's even an Eminem song with Amityville in the name. <laughs> like, there's so many things. That's when you made it, right? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Good job, House. Uh, <laughs> hmm. All right, your next movie. Good job, House. That freakishly looks like a face from the front yes oh it really does though that that's like that that is a true story <laughs> <laughs> um your next movie is 13 ghosts i'm gonna say no okay you would be correct oh yeah um uh, 13 ghosts uh, did you did you see that movie by the way i don't think so no yeah i I didn't care for the storytelling of it, like the like the the the, the writing. I thought was kind of bad. Mm -hmm. But whoever like came up with the backstories of the ghosts, mm -hmm. fucking well done. Mm -hmm. Like the, each of the thirteen ghosts have fascinating backstory, but like the actual like ooh the scary parts of the movie, like mm, nah, not so much. <laughs> All right, um, uh, switching gears to a really 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 good horror movie. The Exorcist. That, I believe, is based on real events. Yes, you are correct. Oh. Uh, yeah, the, the, the quote, true story is actually a little boy um, and not a little girl. But, um, yeah, and of course, yeah. the movie drastically exaggerated the events. But uh, but there you go. It was a pretty, pretty fucking scary movie. <laughs> All right. Sinister. No, although that was actually a kind of a creepy fucking movie. It really was. That that actually was a really, uh, really scary movie. I didn't watch uh, Sinister 2, though. 
Although I heard it's I, almost as good. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, I haven't seen Sinister 2 yet either. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one scared the shit out of me. Um, thank you, C. Robert Cargill, for that. Um, but you are correct. Sinister is not based on real events. Wait, did did Car Cargill write that movie? Yes. Oh, well, now that explains a few things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, your next movie is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I'm... Hmm. I'm going to say no, because I believe I remember that movie's name being changed right before the end of production. Like right. One of the last decisions made was to change the name of that movie because the original name had something to do with a, like you could, you, you could etymologically link it to a recent event that was not, it was like some child had just been murdered and it was a similar name or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, so wow. they changed it to Emily Rose. I think that's the one. So I'm going to say no. Okay, that's interesting. Um, y you're incorrect. It is based on a true story. Hmm. Um, I don't know any of the backstory of that movie, though. That that You might be right. Good Lord. Hmm. Um, Child's Play. I mean, it's based on a real doll. It's based on the My Buddy doll. But I don't think yeah. it's based on any kind of real haunted house or actual events of any sort. So I'm going to say um, no. I was just as surprised as you're about to be. <laughs> that oh, it God. is based on what? true events. What? <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously, you know, a doll possession story. I yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the, the backstory on that one, but uh, but yeah, I was like, what? Okay, that's that's crazy. That's insane. Okay, all right, all right. Yep. Shit's getting right. tricky. Uh, yeah, what about The Ring? Ooh, another good fucking movie. Yeah, it's pretty good. And it's based on a Japanese movie called Ringu. Yeah. Uh, it's basically the same story, but um, scarier, I would say. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I... Uh, Honestly, I would I would say that the the ring was a little scarier than Ringu, but Ringu had more more of a story to it. More it was kind of like more character development and kind of less explanatory American bullshit, but also fewer <laughs> jump scares. Right. It was more of an atmospheric fear versus. Mm. So I, yes, I will I will second that. About. Um. But anyway, I think I uh shit. Um I want to say it is not based on real events. And you are correct. Okay. I think I think yeah, it's a As far as I know. It's a conglomeration of several different as the Japanese do, they like to make they like together a lot of different stories and kind of pick and choose which parts fit yeah. where and right. create an amalgamation of of holy shitness. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They yeah, they've got their they've got their boogeymen just like Americans have boogeymen. Oh, oh do they? <laughs> yep. So <laughs> their their boogeyman okay. don't fuck around though. They'll have like a boogeyman that will haunt little kids but provide fish to a village. And you're like, wait a second here. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a goddamn second. <laughs> so right. we uh, might have to sacrifice our kids to the Ishiwa, but hey, we get to eat. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you want you want fish. Like, uh... <laughs> um, all right, back to dolls here. What about Annabelle? Never saw it. Don't really know anything about it. Um, I'm gonna say it's uh, probably not based on real events. Mm, and you would probably be incorrect. Mm. It is based on a possessed doll. So, like the the Annabelle doll in the movie is this uh, like porcelain scary looking doll uh where the the real annabelle is a raggedy ann doll and uh for the movie of course they they weren't going to get the rights from whoever the the ip owner of raggedy ann probably uh, hasbro of course they're not yeah yeah probably hasbro they're they're not going to license that doll's likeness for uh no. for a horror movie but i mean uh, the raggedy so. ann doll is basically uh, anyway it's Kind of like a, 
It's like a blonde ripoff of Pippi Longstocking, so I don't know how far you want to go with that one, but, you know, whatever. I mean, pretty sure Raggedy Ann had red hair. Oh, but, then it's uh, a direct ripoff just without the pigtails. <laughs> so even more of a fuck uh, off, Hasbro. Maybe. All right. Your final movie. <laughs> your final movie is Poltergeist. Oh, that is based on real events. Okay. And that is correct. Yeah. That's a trippy and, fucking backstory, too. Yeah. The um, the Indian burial ground or not all, having to do with an Indian burial ground? All uh, It does have to do with the Indian burial ground, but it's all like... Like they based the movie is based uh, if I if I if I remember this correctly, that's my disclaimer in case I get some shit wrong. So, B. Cofer doesn't <laughs> fucking come at me. Um, I believe the family in the movie was structured on the family that actually went through the experience. And I don't know if it's an Indian burial ground or a Native American burial ground, but it was there was something about where the house was built, mm. and essentially they eventually just tore the land down and it's now like a fucking farm or some shit. So mm, yeah, okay. it's, it, that was the, uh, watch the each tr- Hollywood true stories and then, mm. and then check out Wikipedia and they, they, they don't match up, but whatever. Yeah, of course. Um, another right. one of those stories you, where everything's revisionist. You got seven out of 10, which mm. means you beat the D. I beat the D. Bob, tell them what they've done. You beat the D. Back to you, Daniel. All right. Well, congratulations for beating the D uh, live on Twitch. Hell yeah. That's, that's how I prefer to do it. <laughs> Man, have you, uh, have you ever been to a haunted house like a real like a house that is purported to be haunted or uh, any haunted location for that matter uh, here's the problem with that okay i suck at remembering specific locations so yes mm-hmm. i've been to haunted places mm-hmm. and i've also been to places that i felt weren't haunted in any way shape or form mm-hmm under the auspice so, that they were haunted. Ah, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So all of those basically just congealed in my mind into one memory of eh, maybe not go to haunted places. Yeah, yeah. Um how about you, man? Place, the only the only place that I've ever been that um I felt at the moment felt like um I might be experiencing some haunted activity. Uh, well, it was actually two separate locations, but they were both in Okinawa. Uh, oh, which, uh, which go figure. Um, yeah. Okinawa is purported to be one of the most haunted places on the planet. Yeah. <clears throat> um, one of them was it was a, it was after a storm. It was like the like a day or two after a typhoon had had rolled through. It was before you got to Okinawa because I was still living downtown. I only lived off base for the first uh like five, r- six roughly months. the first six, yeah, first five or six months yeah. that I was there. <clears throat> um, and my apartment was on the second floor, so we had a balcony that we could we could look, you know, look over the, the little neighborhood. And I saw an apparition that, uh, it, to me, it looked like a little old lady hunched over in the middle of the street. Mm. Uh, we were kind of like on a corner, so like where the like the crossroads, like where the um, where the, where the uh, streets came together. Um, it, it looked like she was just standing right in the middle of the fucking intersection. <laughs> and, uh, I, I kind of freaked out about it for a little while was looking at it and I was like, all right, I'm going to nut up and try to get a little closer. <laughs> so I went down my stairwell, uh, that that's like, like on the side of my house. Mm-hmm. Basically, I, I, so I was walking down the stairwell and, and I looked over my shoulder to, to see if I could still see it. And it was gone. I was like, Oh, what the shit? So I went back up the stairs to the balcony. There it was again. I was like, what the? F-? So I went back down the stairs. Same thing. I did this like two or three times. So then I very slowly went down the stairs, watching that spot the entire time. And what I determined was that a lamp, like a, like a, kind of like a street light, right? But it was like in the middle of someone's like, um, 
garden or whatever mm -hmm. was reflecting off a puddle of water in the middle of the intersection, creating like a like a holographic pro projection almost that was like roughly in the shape of a you know like a humanoid. Gotcha. At least that, that's how it appeared to me. Um, but at, in the moment that I saw it originally, I was pretty convinced that that I was seeing like y you know the the afterlife uh, projected to Earth. You know. Wow. Um, yeah, it was it was it was pretty convincing, and and it made me understand like it because I don't. Uh, how do I put this? I'm going to say I don't believe in ghosts. However, I'm not saying I disbelieve either. Like I'm, I guess I'm I'm ghost agnostic, hmm. right? Like I've I've not seen anything that proves their existence, but I also uh, I know that I don't know everything. So maybe I mean I don't know. How do you disprove them? Um, but I was, I was really hope the, the motivation for me going down the steps to get a closer look was that if ghosts are real, I really want to know it. Like I, I want proof of it. Um, but yeah, so that was one. And then the other one was, um, I, I took you to the, um, uh, Nakagusku castle, right. And the adjoining hotel, mm -hmm. uh, abandoned resort hotel. Yep. Um, so this is a place that uh, it's not open to tourists. Mm -mm. Uh, the, the the castle ruins are, but only during certain hours. You have to like buy admission uh, to go there. Um, but the resort that's behind it is uh, it's an abandoned construction project. It's it's off limits to like literally everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a group of friends of mine, uh, we used to go there late at night we'd sneak past a buddhist temple <laughs> up a hill uh, with covered in vines through the woods past a whole bunch of of uh tombs okinawans like the the above ground tombs yeah um, the turtle so we, shells we snuck through the woods past these things and you eventually emerge in this like burnt up looking like grayish brownish like horrifically looking monstrous resort hotel it was pur purported to be haunted uh well one of the one of the nights that we went up there uh we would park in this like massive parking lot that was adjacent to this buddhist temple mm -hmm. and you would look up and you could see the the hotel basically like a silhouette of the hotel uh, on the hill and i saw like orbs of light just kind of like floating around and i was like Holy fuck. Like, I think those are ghosts. Oh, my God. Uh, when we got up there, uh, we heard we started hearing like really fucking weird noises. And um, anyway, what it is so scared shitless. Right. But we, we pressed on. There was like five or six of us. We pressed on. We get up there to determine that it was some army dudes uh, having BB gun wars inside the resort. What we were seeing in this like like tower room or whatever were flashlights. People were sh shining flashlights in this room. <laughs> and I was like, son of a bitch. But I was, again, convinced, like, oh, my God, this shit's real. Um, but it just kind of, I don't know, it illustrated to me that, that uh, a, a lot of times when people, like, would swear on their life mm -hmm. that they saw a ghost that maybe – Maybe upon closer inspection, <laughs> maybe you would have found the truth of, of what it was. Or maybe it was a ghost. How many fuck? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, I'm going to say that, uh, just to clarify, my belief is that, how to, how to express this? I believe that life is more than a simple science experiment and that okay. living things have an essence that science has not described or explained and that thereby it is possible that some of that essence may be uh may remain once we have or once our, our 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 meat suits have stopped functioning yeah i don't so know a soul, if, basically yeah i don't know if they would if they'd be able to interact with the physical world or if they're you know i i, I don't I, i'm just saying that that's there because i've i've been certain places and felt certain things and 
have experienced um yeah ex- ha- i've had experiences where that 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 belief is the only thing keeping me from being atheist to be honest with you mm, like okay. that's that's that one link and i'm sure eventually i'll get over that too and just be full blown atheist and completely science based <laughs> and say fuck it we're in a virtual reality and it's all it's all a simulation anyway so um <laughs> Well, I mean, if you write ghosts into the code, I mean, I'm not saying they didn't. Uh, but no. <laughs> what about uh, what about the uh, commercial haunted houses? Have you have you gone like paid money yes. to walk through a haunted house? Oh my gosh! So in my experience, haunted houses go from either exceptionally good to why is this place here? <laughs> yes. Those are the two options. Okay. What about you? Um, yeah, I've I've been to several of them, and and yeah, there's there's various. Um, I, I would have more than more than two categories though, because even even some of the good ones, um, they don't necessarily fall in, um, like all into the same category. The some of them are are particularly scary, um, and that's why they're good because mm-hmm. they scare the shit out of me. Um, some of them are particularly good because this is like it's like you're walking through a Hollywood production. Like it is the most amazing uh, theatrical performance, um, amazing special effects, and you're right there in it. And they didn't they didn't scare me that much, but my God, was it fun to look at for that that thirty minutes or whatever that I was walking through. I would classify both of those ex- ex- exceptional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, well, I, I yeah, I guess uh, I guess I would say uh, subcategories of those those two. Um, but yeah, there, there's been some shitty ones and you know, it's fine as long as you're having fun. So like if you, if you go with a group of like four people and like, uh, somebody just for whatever reason, you know, they're afraid of clowns or whatever Mm -hmm. and they see a clown and they freak the fuck out. Sometimes it's fun just to witness them being afraid (laughs) for a couple of minutes, you know? So even some of the shittier ones can still be fun. Um, it really sucks though when your expectations are dashed. Like when you know you pay ten bucks to go through this thing that's that's been hyped by some folks, and then you go there. It takes uh, about five or six minutes to walk through, and it was boring, not scary. Um, seemed very low budget. Um, yeah, like those suck. Like those are gonna yeah. get like a negative stars on Yelp. Like, <laughs> although I will admit my the favorite my favorite haunted house that I've ever been to, uh, ever. It was mm-hmm. completely fucking amazing, and it was very low budget, exceptionally low budget. Mm-hmm. It was the fifteenth Com Squadron mm-hmm. haunted mm-hmm. house in Okinawa. They had a hangar, and just mm-hmm. the way that you went through, there wasn't a there. There was a couple rooms and a couple scenes, but it was just that it, they they had made a maze out of black sheets. Mm-hmm. So the suspense, and it was long, like it took like 10 minutes to go through. It wasn't short, you know, mm-hmm. um, the, the way that they did that, they created the suspense that you didn't know where the sheets were going because it, it was basically like a, a mirror maze, except in very dark areas with black sheets. And yes. it was ridiculously cool. And it just built the suspense up in the right way that, that I, I was like, I'm not doing it again. But that was awesome. The uh, yeah, so uh, haunted houses on on military bases. One of the most unique ones that I went to was actually at um, what was it called? Capone, I think. Capone Air Station. Um, it was when I was at the NCO Academy in mm. Germany. Um, I, I was there over Halloween, and the I, I think that might have been a was that a comm squadron, or maybe it was CE. It was either CE or comm. Uh, put on this thing, but it was outdoors hmm. uh, by far, like the most unique haunted house. Well, qu- I'm putting it in quotes here, haunted house uh, because it was outdoors. It was like a haunted, haunted forest kind of thing uh, where they had basically a predetermined path that you were supposed to go. And it was like an obvious path, right? That mm-hmm. you're supposed to walk down. Uh, but you had, you know, the standard, like people like jumping out from behind trees and they had uh, a really clever, uh, thing on the ground is like a, a you know a bunch of uh, you know because it's autumn so there's a lot of um, foliage you know, dead leaves on the ground and and whatnot uh, but they had um, 
man, I'm drawing a blank now. What, what do you call the, like, oh, camo netting. It was like, I'm pretty sure they used camo netting um, on the ground as well. And they had somebody underneath it and they were like coming up out of the ground to grab you. And so, you know, they didn't actually touch you, but it looked like they were going to get you mm-hmm. and um, all kinds of stuff. They had, and they, they rigged up this, um, uh, like this, this rope mechanism that had this like ghostly, like a, it's basically like a ghost sheet, like, like swing down out of the trees at you and stuff. It was really, really well done. Hmm. Super clever and uh, a lot of fun to go through that one. Uh, did did you go through the MXS? Uh, MXS? Yeah, I think it was called MXS. Uh, the squadron I was in in Okinawa. Did you go through the MXS haunted house for the, uh, what did they call it? It was like America, America Fest. No. Where they open the gate to uh to, to locals. civilians and whatnot. Yeah. No. I avoided yeah. so America I, was... I avoided America Fest with the absolute of my ability every single time we did it. <laughs> the only time I went was the first year that I was there. Mm-hmm. And that was because I was volunteering. Mm-hmm. I was actually part of the crew that built the haunted house mm-hmm. for the squadron. And uh for the for the performance aspect um, I, I didn't actually, you know, I wasn't one of the performers, but I was what's called a pusher. So the person that's behind the group to make sure that they don't double back and make sure that, you know, keep them on track. They stay on schedule. Yeah. Um, I was a pusher for that one. So that was a blast to see the different reactions to the things that we built. Yeah. Because we, we've spent probably a good three months Oof. putting this thing together. Um, it was... It was it was a lot of fun to see like because you know we got to like build the gimmicks um, actually you know build the walls and paint everything black and put yep. you know a, a different decor up and uh, all the little gimmicks and the little trap doors that people were hiding behind and as, all that kind of stuff. As a theater nerd, I love that shit. Yes, yes, it was it was super fun. Wait, let me clarify. As a non participating or minim- minimally participating <laughs> theater nerd, I dig that shit. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. The most fun I had though uh, was when I was I was really young. I was at my my first duty assignment at Eglin. Uh, there's an organization called the JCs. I don't even remember what they do, except they put on a haunted house every year on Okaloosa Island. <laughs> and uh, I I volunteered for that because one of my uh, uh, coworkers was a member of the JCs and they, they, you know, put on this haunted house every year and he came to work one day and asked for volunteers cause they needed, they were a little short on performers. So I was like, sure, that sounds like a lot of fun. And, uh, man, I'm glad I did. Um, uh, it was, it was one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. Hmm. Um, I, we, uh, so I get there and they, they have a, a, uh, like a makeup artist that, uh, just basically, they're like, when you walk in to volunteer, you're basically their canvas. There's like, ah, we could use another monster. Oh, we could mm-hmm. use another like reanimated corpse. Ah, we could, you know, whatever they want. I was made up to look like, I believe in uh, like a, uh, accident victim. <laughs> like I was all just like, like my face was all like cut the shit. And, um, I think I had like, like a burnt, like part of my face was burnt. Cause I remember we, like, she put like this, like oatmeal concoction, <laughs> On my face, so it looked like flesh was melting and stuff. It was, um, it was insane. That was that was an, an incredible experience just in itself. If you've never sat in a in a uh, makeup chair for like theatrical makeup mm-hmm. for an hour and watch yourself transform in a mirror, like <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's a trip. Um, the only they, time I've ever really performed like that. So I went to Universal Studios and I was the volunteer to get strapped up and when they did the fake knife thing and the blood uh, and all that stuff, you know. Oh, and I remember after that, I was like, man, that was the shittiest performance ever. Not two months later, we had a mock uh, mass casualty exercise mm. at McIntyre Air Base, uh, the reserve ba- or the guard base, not far from Shaw. And I was one of the people slated to volunteer for that. So they went and they did the makeup and all that stuff. And everybody was supposed to lay out, and then the the medical, you know, the the medical crew would uh, would scurry out and try to triage and all that kind of stuff, and you know, all, mm-hmm. all that. I was the last one treated because they had they had broken my leg, given me a a, a a a complete fracture, like through the through my through my pant leg or whatever. 
Um, right, right. I had all this stuff on my face. Uh, like my hand was like cut off or my arm was cut off. So I had my, like my shoulder, like, you know, my arms tucked in my, in the sleeve, double backed. And then like, they had like a stump on there and stuff. And they were like, uh, uh, we need somebody. Cause the reason I got picked is that they're like, we need somebody that's willing to let their uniform go. And I was like, I intentionally wore my shittiest uniform here today. Like, right, right, like let's right. do this. So I had like blood all over me and everything. Um, and they, they said, okay, everybody on the count of three, start your acting. And they're like, one, two, three. And everybody's like, oh, it hurts so bad. <laughs> I was over there like, yeah. oh, God, help me. You know, like just, <laughs> just doing it up. Yeah. I was, I was yelling so much and, and like they said nothing was off limits. So I was in there, my fucking arm's gone and all this shit. And, uh, yeah, they didn't, nobody, nobody wanted to come help me. And they all got written up for it because I was the most heavily injured person out there. And they ignored me because, because I was acting so real as the, 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 the lady said, of course, I don't, I don't know. I've never been on a battlefield. I was just like taking all my Hollywood knowledge and and stacking it on. And and plus like, like triage, like you got to prioritize the, prioritize the people you can save. Right. You were that fucked up. Like, "Mm." Yeah. we'll uh maybe maybe give you some painkillers dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah here's some whiskey call it a day <laughs> yeah Good um but yeah it was uh it was it was fun um now what's your favorite uh, uh what, what is your favorite gag what is your favorite uh, uh trick that, you, that haunted houses do well the favorite one that i performed uh was uh i i was like a guy, like I was chained to a wall with like yeah. both of my, my, my arms, like in shackles uh-huh. against a wall. And, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, I'll go ahead and explain the gimmick now. So that, so that the rest of the story kind of makes sense. Uh, the, the gimmick is that there's two holes in the wall, you know, roughly like where my, where my, you know, the height that my wrists were. Right. And you've got a chain going into each of those holes at the, in the back. So behind that wall is a two by four that each of those chains is attached to. Okay. Right. So there's probably about, Oh, I don't know, two feet of chain, um, you know, on, on each, you know, attached to the shackles attached to my arms. Right. Right. Um, so the way that it works is when you, when you pull the, the chains, you know, from the front facing side, when you pull the chains out, eventually the, the two by four gets to the wall, right. And it stops the chains from coming out any further. Right. So, the 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 character i guess is like a you know a, a prisoner in some sort of like torture chamber or something so i'm shackled to the wall so what i do is i i just kind of shake my arms and like you know do like you know snarling or some sort of like um you know just like uh, kind of thing right and i'm just like kind of rattling my hands back and forth it looks as if i'm actually attached to the wall completely mm-hmm. Uh, but when they when they come around the corner and they see me, you know, they're like, ooh, you know, and there's like, you know, strobe lights going on. There's all this right. weird lighting and shit going on. And to pass, they had because they had to come toward me and then take like a left hand turn, uh, you know, to go, to go past me, basically. Right. To to, to um, the next the next room or next next set. Yes, to the yes to the next set. Right. And then so when they get to the the turn is when I leap out at them and I go full speed at full bore screaming as I do it. Ah! The chains are making the hellacious sound coming up through the, through the, the wooden wall behind me. But the, the, the board stops me from, from actually getting to them because the way, because I'm, I'm like set back a little bit. So mm-hmm. the, the two feet or whatever, like that is as far as my hands can go. And that's where like the turn is. Mm. So I stop every time within inches of the people. <laughs> and, uh, dude, I had, I had a guy pass out. I, had, I don't know how many people <laughs> fall down. Um, one lady, I'm pretty sure she had a panic attack and probably pissed herself. Um, it was just, dude, it was insane. And just the, the high that you get from scaring the fuck out of people like that. It's, it's intoxicating, dude. <laughs> All right. So, so what's the, uh, what's the scary, what, what is, describe the scariest haunted house you've ever been to or, or the one that you got the biggest reaction from like the, for you personally, your, your biggest for me reaction. Personally. Oh man. See, that is tough. 
Um, probably the most scared I ever was in a haunted house was when I was a kid. I was probably like five or six. And I don't even remember where this was at. It was like at some fair or something like that. Um, I, in retrospect, it probably wasn't all that scary. But being that young and um, you know not knowing what to expect or whatever, um, just little things like just a you know a little monster popping out of the wall or whatever just scared the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as an adult, that's a tough one, man, uh, because like when I did the ha- the haunted house when I was a performer in a haunted house at Eglin, uh, that was I was like 19 years old mm-hmm. at the time, so I was like really young. And every haunted house that I would go to after that. I was judging it against the one that that I worked at, or I would be evaluating their gimmicks and things. I wouldn't be right scared per se, um, but the yeah, I mean, it, it would have to be a jump out gimmick. Um, like there was okay, so there was one where there was a a cage, like an empty cage, um, but and you have to walk past the cage, and as soon as you get up to the cage, somebody jumps out from the ceiling. Grabs the bars and starts shaking them like inches from your face. Mm-hmm. Um, shit like that um, will make you jump out of your skin. Um, yeah, stuff like that is is what uh, that's what gets me. Or or the guy you think you're you're out of the haunted house, um, and to get to the parking lot you have to walk through this like uh, you know one final set, mm-hmm. but it's technically outside. It's supposed to be um, just dressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you get outside and that's when the the guy starts up the the chainsaw. Mm. Uh, right behind the door that you just came out of, you know, things like that. Uh, those, uh, those will get your blood going. <laughs> um, my favorite gimmick that I've ever seen, the one that, that actually got me, and uh, uh, the, haunt, the, the best haunted house are two different things for very different reasons. The best, the best gimmick, um, this was a haunted house in, I want to say Charleston, but it's somewhere in the south. It was not Myrtle Beach, though, because that that's the other story. Um, we're going through and it's fairly, it's almost pleasant. Like, you know, like there's a couple of funny things here and this and that. And it's, it's almost like, I almost had this feeling that that it was a, uh, uh, like a comedy haunted house. Yeah. And then things, there was a mad scientist room. Yeah. Then then things things took a turn. Mm Mm-hmm. We're going through one room, and it's basically just a long hallway, and there's a little bit of light at the end that you can just barely see, so you kind of know where to go, but you're you're kind of feeling your way through, and uh, there's eventually you hit like a plexiglass wall, so you got to find your way around that, and it kind of comes into this this you know that 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 mirror maze kind of feel, but. Mm-hmm. As you're going Not through, good for people with claustrophobia, by the way. Right. Uh, uh, as as you're going through, your feet start getting wet, like you start stepping Ooh. on water. Ooh. Okay. So like the 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 floor is like soggy, if you will, and then some of the plexiglass start. There you can feel drips of water that's coming down some of the plexiglass, and right as you get to that light, you think, oh, finally we're done with this shit and we can move on. And right as you get there, um. The floor lights up. So you look mm-hmm. down, and in the floor, I'm, I'm assuming under plexiglass, is a dude laying up against the glass like he's like he's underneath it, and there's just water everywhere, and he's screaming, Help me! Oh, my God. That's amazing. After that, it was pretty fucking freaky. Like after that, that 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 was that was uh, like oh, because they had this this long hallway, probably like forty or fifty feet of, of hallway that was all building up to that one thing, and it was it totally yeah. paid off. It was so worth it. It wasn't scary, but it definitely set the mood to you're not they're not fucking around anymore. We've we've been through the niceties. Um, yeah. the worst, the best, best worst. Haunted house I've been through was at Myrtle Beach. is on the second floor of this old building. There's lots of old buildings in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. And I was with my ex-wife and our friend. Ah, shit. I don't. I, his name just escaped me. Uh, we, we were going through this haunted house. We're like, you know what? Fuck it. We're gonna we're gonna pay ten bucks each. We're gonna go through this haunted house. Cool. Mm-hmm. And we get in there, and it starts out. You know, there's a couple. You know, you go into the, the typical hallway, right? And there's like a room over here, then there's a room over here, and you're kind of there's all these sets and stuff like that, and you're kind of going through. About three sets in, you hear a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. 
And then you start hearing the screams. And then you start hearing the, the clanging on the pipes. And the clanging on the pipes is kind of coming from everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the dude with the chainsaw walks in front of you and just like dips away. And you don't know where the hell he went. From that point on, I was the guardian. I just kept ushering my ex-wife and our friend along. I didn't know that our friend had like this intense fear of chainsaws. Oh, geez. So he was, as soon as that chainsaw started, he started getting on edge. And when that dude stepped out and then stepped away, he lost his shit. And he was in full-fledged panic mode, like just fighting to get out of there. And my ex-wife was already kind of freaked out. She doesn't like haunted houses to begin with, or at least she, at least she didn't. Um, so that just set her off. And basically, I was just the guardian from that point on. So every time something <laughs> scary was going on, I had to just be the one to, like, it, I, I, I don't even remember the rest of the haunted house. I know it took, like, forever to get out of there. It was, like, 20 minutes long. Like, it took forever. It's two stories. You know, oh, it, they, they pulled yeah. every trick in the book. You, you had to go downstairs and back upstairs, and there's creaky boards and shit, and, like, all the things. And all the while, you could hear this chainsaw just kind of randomly going around you. Sometimes it'd be right up underneath you. Sometimes it'd be right behind you or right above you. Like you could, you just didn't know where the fuck it was coming from. <laughs> yeah. Um, we finished that. They bust out laughing because of all that nervous laughter. I turned to the trash can right there at the exit and puked. Oh, wow. Their reactions were so intense. And I was basically just holding everything in so much that when it finally let, we finally got out of there, everything just came out. Good Lord. And that was still one of my favorite haunted houses. And it was it had nothing to do with the haunted house. It had to do with the company I was with. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. It was, yeah. that uh, uh, You don't go to haunted houses people don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that's, whew, boy. God, you know what? I think I'm going to find a haunted house to volunteer for. <laughs> this, this is this is bringing back all kinds of memories. We just, we want, we have I one here locally, that, yeah. and uh, the kids and my wife went to it last year, and they said it was nothing to it was it was it was okay. Yeah, it yeah. was six dollars admission per person. Well, kids under ten well, you, were free, and it was you need to vol you need to volunteer there so you can improve it. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Autumn was freaked out. Evelyn was freaked out. David didn't think anything of it. And my wife was like, yeah, it wasn't really worth the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The biggest thing for me, like going to haunted houses now is the line. Like I, the older I get, the more I dislike lines. Right. Like queuing up for things. Like I, they just drive me insane. And uh, the last couple haunted houses I've been to, it's been like, you know, 30, 40, you know, maybe an hour uh, wait in these lines and it's just like oh my god like this thing better be the best haunted house I've ever fucking seen and you know of course it's not so have, I'm left have you ever that, been to yeah. Disney <laughs> I haven't okay so the haunted house at Disney Disneyland haunted Disney Mansion? World doesn't matter yeah it, it doesn't matter uh they're roughly the same um it's not haunted it freaks little kids out like autumn and Evelyn were freaked out by it a little bit but it's so fucking fun. Mm-hmm. It's so fun. I will ride that ride every single day. I'm at Disney if I have the chance. Like it's it's just fun. It's I love the ambiance. I love the watching the visual effects. And even though I know how they they were all done, it's still fun to just watch. And it's it's so yeah. good. And I know I'm gonna receive hate for that, but I fucking love it. <laughs> I love that haunted house. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That. Yeah. God. That's another thing I need to do. I need to just go ahead and schedule a trip to Disney. Yeah, you do. It's really um, shitty. They're open now. You should go. <laughs> yep, I really should. Uh, what What are we going to talk about next week, Amos? Uh, I hadn't decided yet. Okay. <laughs> were you um, Were you deciding between a few different things, or you're you're just kind of like, hmm? I I it, it, uh, the thought hadn't even crossed my mind until you mentioned it right before the show, and then since then I've been worried about. I was worried about our friend's name, and I still forgot it. Um, yeah, right, right. Let's uh, let's uh, let's let's go with. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I'll tweet it. I'll tweet it within the next twenty four hours. Perfect. All right. Uh, we've got one more segment. Yeah. Shall we? 
Let's do it. All right. Here at WRMP, we like to bring you the best of the best of the worst of the internet. That's right. We took night attack shit and we said, fuck it, we're going to do the weather like that. So here is the best of the best weather worldwide here on WRMP. Today in Porto Alegre, Brazil. That's right. We're going down south. I don't even know if that's in the southern hemisphere. It doesn't matter because it's southern to me and I'm in Alaska. So fuck everybody. We're going down south. We're going to see what the weather is like in Porto Alegre, Brazil. Uh, One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. It's Ritual Miseries. One word weather. Brought to you by Mark Jelinek and his What Is It About the Weather podcast. In Porto Alegre, Brazil, it is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's partly cloudy. That's right. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. All right. Uh, I love the, uh, the, the, the big buildup, the strong music, and then the soft forecast. <laughs> 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 so good. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I love or hate this bit, but like, let's keep going so that I can decide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Um, hey, dude. Uh, next week topic. I don't know what we're gonna do, but uh, you can find out by following the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Hell yeah, and I'll probably retweet it over at rm underscore del noche. I might even write about the discussion or d- write write about my thought process on deciding a topic on anthonylemos.com where you can also find all my socials. Yeah, I also encourage you to go to bit.ly slash RMP Discord where you can maybe help us choose the topics week to week. Oh, that would be fun. Completely unnecessary because we're going to talk anyway, but totally <laughs> adds to it. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and of course you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at ritualmisery.com. We are live every Sunday these days at 9 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> yeah. Check us out. Uh, Twitch.tv slash ritual misery. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Yeah, dude. All right. So I think we've got our title.